Some of you wannna be YouTubers out there are making a lot of mistakes, and today I'm gonna to be covering a couple of them. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video here on my channel. So on my channel, I strive to help you guys become better YouTubers and better streamers through editing and tips and whatnot, and I see you guys making a lot of mistakes. So today I'm gonna be covering five mistakes that I see a lot of beginner YouTubers making. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. Mistake number one. So for all of you out there using OBS to stream to Twitch or record the gameplay for your YouTube videos, which is probably 99% of you out there are using OBS, you probably are pretty familiar with bitrate. Your bitrate is the quality of video that you are pushing out to Twitch or the quality of video that you're recording to your computer if you're recording gameplay for your YouTube video. And when you're streaming, your bitrate is based on your internet speeds. So if we open up the settings of OBS and go down to the output tab and click on streaming, you're gonna see that this is where you set the bitrate for your stream. And 2500 to 3000 is usually a pretty good starting bitrate for beginner streamers and lower level streamers if your internet can handle it. But the only problem is, is when you click on the recording tab, if you're on the simple output mode, then this is going to use the same 2500 to 3000 bitrate to record your videos as well. And while streaming 2500 to 3000 is a pretty good bitrate for a 720p stream, it is not a good bitrate for a 720p record or especially a 1080p recording, which is what I record to. That is an unbelievably low bitrate and will get you some really bad artifacting and it will look really grainy, especially in videos with high motion. So to stop your first mistake, you need to go into your OBS settings, go to output, click on recording and change this output mode right here to advance so that you can set a custom bitrate for your recording and not use the same one you're using when you're streaming. I chill around 20,000. I know that seems high, but when you're recording video, Videos, you're not using internet so you don't need to worry about your internet when you're setting your bitrate for recording videos you just want a super high bitrate so you can get some high quality video so here's an example of a video recorded at a 2500 bitrate at a very high motion point in the video and then here's an example of a video recorded at 20,000 bitrate at another high motion point in the video as you can see the artifacting on the 2500 is absolutely terrible and that can be cleaned up if you just change your bitrate to be much higher when you're recording videos Mistake number two. This mistake is more focused on your gear and that is valuing your video quality over your audio quality. This is a big no-no even in the film world. They teach you to value your audio quality over your video quality. People are more likely to stick around if you have very high audio quality and if you're lacking in the video department than if you have a super nice camera and your microphone is absolute crap. So it's a lot more likely that viewers will forgive your video quality looking like this as long as your audio sounds really good and your microphone is nice and they'll stick around and watch your whole video instead of your video quality looking really good like this but your microphone literally sounds like a trash can people don't want to stick around and watch this when your microphone sounds like this doesn't matter how good your video quality is so make sure you're upgrading your microphone so if you're just starting out making YouTube videos or streaming and you do not have a webcam and you do not have a microphone, I highly suggest getting the microphone first. Or if you have a really crappy webcam and a crappy microphone, I highly suggest upgrading your microphone first. It may not seem like the choice. You may want to have that nice camera quality, but trust me, people are much more likely to stick around if your audio quality is on point and sounds crisp and clean instead of your video quality being on point and it sounding like you're talking into a potato. Mistake number three. All right guys, so this mistake is in the same genre as the last one. We're still talking about gear, and that is upgrading your camera before you upgrade or before you even get lighting. Trust me guys, it does not matter if you're recording on a $20 camera or a $20,000 camera. Cameras need light. And if you do not give the camera the amount of light that it needs, it is going to look like crap. The current camera and lens setup that I'm using to record this video set me back about $8,000. And if I turn off all the lighting in this room, here's what it's gonna look like. This is what it would look like. I'm not kidding, I have every single light in here shut off. I have a really bright window in front of me. That's the only light that's being provided. And this is how bad the camera looks. I had to crank up the exposure so that I could get a usable shot and so that it's bright enough. And this is what it looks like, all grainy and gross. So even an $8,000 cinema camera will not look good unless you give it the lighting it needs. And this is me shooting with the $50 Logitech C920 webcam. You see how good it looks when you properly light it? 
So guys, I am begging you, if you are not getting the quality that you want out of your camera before you run out and spend thousands on a professional DSLR because you think that is what's going to make the difference, head on over to Amazon and buy $50 worth of lights. Buy a couple soft boxes. I'll leave a link down in the description to some fantastic lights that are very cheap that'll really help your video quality. And I think you guys will be surprised at how much you can pull out of a $50 Logitech C920 webcam versus a couple thousand dollar DSLR. You really do not need to spend that much on a camera if you're just making sure it is lit properly. A professional cinema camera is going to look just as crappy as a webcam if you do not give it the lights that it needs. So make sure you guys are setting up your lighting before you run out and buy a nice camera. Mistake number four. So the next mistake is a small one and might seem pretty obvious, but I have seen people make this mistake and I know how frustrating it can be to not know why this is happening, but you need to make sure that you are setting your camera's frame rate to the same frame rate as your OBS recording. If you're recording on a standalone camera and not using a webcam, you need to match that to OBS. You're probably recording on OBS at either 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second. You need to set your camera to be the exact same frame rate or you're gonna get some audio drift. So what's going to happen is when you bring your clips into your editor and you're recording your microphone or your voice into OBS and your mouth, your face cam into a separate camera and the frame rates aren't synced, you're going to notice that your voice is going to slowly drift away from the video of your mouth moving and your talking is no longer going to line up with the actual voice coming from your microphone. And this issue is because your frame rates are not matched up perfectly and your camera most likely will not shoot. 30 frames per second, it's probably gonna shoot 29.976. And I could explain why that is, but you have to dive deep back into the history of television. And maybe I'll explain it in another video, but just know that if you're at 29.976 on your camera, you need to be at 29.976 on your OBS. Just make sure the number of the frame rate on your camera and OBS are identical, or you're gonna get audio drifting, and it's gonna be unbelievably aggravating when you find out that your voice does not match your mouth. Mistake number five. All right, guys, so we've done software mistakes about OBS. We've done hardware mistakes about your equipment, but this mistake is probably the most important, and that is to make sure that you are having fun making videos. And one of the biggest mistakes is setting a schedule for releasing videos too early. If you're just starting out on YouTube, I beg you, do not put out on Twitter, do not put out on YouTube, I'm releasing one video a week, or I'm releasing a video on Mondays and a video on Fridays. That is the easiest way to burn yourself out, is to give yourself a deadline. Just make videos when you wanna make videos, and when you think they're done, put them up on YouTube and just make sure you're having fun. If you're forcing out videos just to meet a deadline, that is going to burn you out so quickly. And trust me guys, this is not my first YouTube channel I've tried to start. I've done multiple gaming channels and I've fallen into that pit myself where I set a goal for myself or I set a deadline where I have to release two videos a week, three videos a week on these specific dates, and it causes you to force out lackluster content. And you wanna make sure you're putting out the most quality content for your viewers, and that comes with taking time to make videos and not just rushing them out just so that you can have a set schedule. All the big YouTubers may say that a set schedule is the way to go, and that's true for if you have a following. People wanna know when they need to come back, but when you're just starting out, you need to make sure you're having fun and you don't wanna get burnout, guys. And it, it it's rough when you do get burnout trust me I've had it happen so many times and this channel is the first time I feel like I'm doing it right I'm not giving myself a schedule I'm just releasing the videos when I want to and it's been working out really good guys and I really hope that you take this mistake to heart because if there's any of these mistakes well you should you, you should stop doing all of them and they're pretty easy but if you should take one mistake from this video and fix it it is this one guys so I really hope you enjoy making videos. And that is all I have for the video. That is the five biggest mistakes that I could think of that I see beginner YouTubers making. If you like this video, I will make another one, maybe a 10 mistakes or maybe, uh, I don't know. Just let me know if you guys liked the video down in the comments and leave a like. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter if you have any questions about anything. And I'll see you guys in another video. Peace out.